I'm inside the Sky Venture wind tunnel in Denver, Colorado, riding the fierce air currents generated by massive 1,200 horsepower fans. I'm getting a crash course in the aerodynamic principles behind every plane and helicopter. My flight instructor is Rusty Lewis. So this is a pretty sophisticated system. It's not just some fan blowing. No, it's very sophisticated. There's a lot of, lot of thought gone into the design of the building to make it, make it what it is and, and as efficient as it is and as fast as it, as it is. Without wind tunnels, we wouldn't be jetting off on vacations or shuttling astronauts into space. In fact, the wind tunnel helped the Wright brothers create their first plane. But vertical wind tunnels, or VWTs, open a whole new world of aerodynamics. Skydiving in a bottle. It must take some pretty cool physics to pull off this killer joyride. Okay, so how does this actually work? I know that there's a big giant fan down there, but I don't see it. Actually, the fan is not on the floor. There's four fans, and they're actually positioned at the top of the building. Oh, up here? Yeah, so the way, the way it works is, as you can see where the, uh, the flight chamber is here, the flying portion of it where the glass is, the wind comes through the flight chamber, goes to the top of the building, and then pretty much separates into two columns. Okay. And that's where it goes through the fans, so it's pretty much sucking the air up. The key to my flight is a powerful laminar flow, a jet of smooth air to generate maximum lift. It starts with the fans. They suck in outside air, then kick it sideways at around 30 miles an hour. Now the Airstream's gotta take a hard 90 degree turn, and it's gotta do it without creating turbulence, which would reduce the air power. So these turning vanes are aerodynamically designed to bend the Airstream smoothly, twisting it downward. More vanes at the bottom twist the Airstream again. One more turn, and the airstream is rushing towards me. It's still laminar smooth, but not yet fast enough to make me fly. Now the inlet contractor does its work. The tube narrows sharply, squeezing out the air like toothpaste and quadrupling its speed. It blasts up at 120 miles an hour, roaring into the flight chamber and sending me soaring. The way we measure it, and what we say is the, that the tunnel draws through about a million cubic feet of air per minute. We're talking hurricane force winds blowing straight at me. They have to be that fast to counteract my terminal velocity. That's the speed at which I fall when the downward pull of gravity equals the upward force of air resistance. For a skydiver free falling, terminal velocity is about 120 miles per hour. And that's just what I'm doing here, endlessly falling, while the upward airflow cancels that out. Now, if I want to go higher or lower, they can vary the wind speed by adjusting the fan power. It can do just over about 160 miles an hour. Hey, is that like hurricane speed? I mean, pretty much. Category five. When you're flying, it's about the same. So now we're playing with some more aerodynamics. Make yourself broader, you create more drag or air resistance, and you get more lift. When you reduce your profile, gravity gains the upper hand, and you drop. You gotta get the balance just right for smooth sailing. But when you do, you feel like you've mastered the science of flight. to see this jet stream coming at me at hurricane speed. It's about the most fun you can have, almost staying upright. This. So far, I've been playing with an invisible force, air currents. And they levitated me. 
We all take air power for granted because we can't see it. But what if you could see air as clearly... Oh. Its raw power can be channeled for thrills, 